The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. Kane. Hey, your brothers. I don't know. I'm on my brother's keeper. Can I could literally hear your brother blood crying from the earth. I'm because of this, I curse the earth for you. You could be busy farming, but you will not get any return from the ground. And as a matter of fact, I could have you like a vagabond on the earth just because of your deeds. Lord, this punishment is more than I can bear. Jealousy, anger, and disobedience to God are all themes echoed throughout the story of Cain and Abel. Genesis chapter 4 brings us a story of two brothers, the first siblings, born in sin. The wages of sin is death, and God had given instructions to the fallen race of what sacrifices to offer in order to atone for their sins. However, one brother decided to follow these instructions while another decided to do his own thing. This drove a wedge between the two siblings and led one to do the unthinkable. Mm -hmm. All right. This week, we have a story coming all the way from Genesis 4. Very iconic story, Cain and Abel, the two first siblings of the two first parents of mankind. Yeah, they, they they had a lot of firsts, you know what I mean? <laughs> first first humans to be born, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of crazy because Adam was Adam was born a man. Well, he wasn't really born. Like, he, he wasn't born. You see what I'm saying? Like, like Adam was one years old, <laughs> but in his full form. <laughs> exactly. He, was, he, he didn't even see one yet. You understand? Exactly. Potentially. That's weird. It's yeah. kind of hard to fathom. But we digress, yeah. <laughs> straight out. But yeah, so we, we were told in Genesis 4 that Adam lay with Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Then with help of the law, she brought forth another son, Abel. And we know the two brothers have, were like almost polar opposites in a sense. Mm -hmm. Abel loved being a shepherd, and Cain loved Gardening. Farming, yeah. <laughs> Don't say gardening. <laughs> he was like agriculture. You see what I say? Like he was farming, you know, like fruits, vegetables, stuff like that. What is a farm? Huh? What is a farm? You, you want to call it a garden? It's a high-class garden if you ask me. <laughs> is it a high-class garden? I don't know. I mean, but, you know, back in the island, your mommy is have some onion and some sweet pepper outside in the garden. In our garden. And a farm was just done on a large scale. No, that is very true. <laughs> See, when I, whenever I think, whenever I think. And then it's so funny because my old lady have a garden. You see what they say? Exactly. But she don't really have flowers, I don't think. You know what I mean? Exactly. But she definitely have broccoli. Like back home, when someone have a garden, their garden is usually talking about stuff they can eat. <laughs> we don't really refer to our flowers as gardens. That's just stuff in the yard. And then guess what? Adam and Eve used to live in the Garden of Eden. Exactly. And they had all type of fruits you could eat of any of these fruits except for the one. We ain't know how that ends. Yeah, we, so yeah, we ain't yeah. gotta go down that rabbit hole, yeah. but it's okay. I'll give you that. <laughs> all right then. He was a gardener. He was a gardener. We'll see. So this story gets very interesting because there's a lot of stuff to delve into the story, I feel like, because one, besides the whole brothers, we have it goes into more of their sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Because God gives God gave Adam and Eve an example of a first sacrifice as to what they need to do to essentially atone for their sins. So God gave them specific instructions. 
like, all right, you must sacrifice a lamb, build an altar and sacrifice a lamb to me, and I will send down the fire from heaven to so that I accept this gift. Mm -hmm. So now we have two brothers. One was more so in his craft. So like it was, to me it was almost second nature for Abel. I mean, yeah, because he's dealing with animals every day. You know Exactly. What I mean? So it was like, it's nothing to catch a lamb, a deer and sacrifice it. That's what God asks for. Well, you know, a lamb can cut out the deer part. But, you know, there's nothing for him to do that. Abel and Cain saying, all right, you know, I got all my stuff from the farm or garden, you know, depending on who you ask. The, so I'm going to just, instead of having to come out of my element, I'm going to just go and sacrifice these fruits and these vegetables. So this is one thing that I've never thought about before now. And I just bought to add just a, a different, like a different dimension, not, not even a, just like a different layer to this, to this scenario. Cain was Abel's older brother. Mm. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, it was laid out to them that unless there is blood, without a shed of blood, there will be no remission of sins. So God and, and Jesus and everybody would have had to lay down to them and tell them, you guys are going to have to sacrifice sheep or lambs rather to symbolize the lamb of God who will be slain for our sins. So they break all this down to them. And Adam and Eve would have had to pass that down to their children. Right? And if this was not their first sacrifice, Cain was just completely out of pocket. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because if they if they see their parents do this all their life, they probably would have had sacrifices for multiple times mm -hmm. in their life. And then one day Cain probably was thinking, honest to God, I about to freak it. You see what I'm saying? I about to put my spin on it. But you understand know the crazy what I'm saying? thing about it too, and I wouldn't even say the crazy thing about it, but it's one thing that also stood out, stood out to me that Adam and Eve were not mentioned during this whole <laughs> this story whole, yeah. arc up until the end, which we're going to get to at a certain point, but they weren't mentioned in here. I'm like, your son's out here doing their own thing and y'all aren't even trying to correct them. Because the thing is like, Abel was saying like, yo, Cain, you know you shouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. Like able, like it's because I mean I'm a older brother, so I know when it's like you know your little brother trying to come to you and telling you how to do something. That makes <laughs> your pride a little different. Yeah, and then you was the only older brother too. You see, <laughs> exactly. like, you see what I saying? Like Ain't so, no script. Yeah, bro. So you can't, you Ain't can't no really look. Reason with. Yeah, you can't reason with nobody, bro. It's just y'all two, and you're just like what? You know what? What's crazy? You can't even ask your daddy, fell because your daddy ain't never gone through this before. No, you see Ouch. what I saying? Oh, your mommy ain't ever gone through this before. No nope. siblings. Wow. Hmm. But the thing is, like, so God even realized, like, Cain was getting mad because Abel's gifts, Abel's offerings to the Lord are getting accepted. Cain's offerings aren't. And the crazy thing is, like, God even said, Cain, why are you angry? Why are your face so, like, downtrodden? You know what to do is right. And you know what will be accepted. But if you do what is right... And your sins, and like if you don't do what is right, your sins crouching at the door. And so your desires, essentially God was trying to say like, you're giving into your desires. So you need to master your desires. Like you need, like you know in your mind what is right. Like you know what to do. You already have the examples like you were saying. You have the examples. You've seen your parents do this. You've probably done it at an earlier age. So why now all of a sudden you think you can go onto your own understanding and give to me fruits? When I already told you what to do, and you've seen what I accepted, and you've and you are constantly seeing what I accept, mm -hmm. and you are constantly seeing what I reject, so why are you getting mad when you know you're doing wrong? See, and that's and that's the thing about doing wrong, bro. It's like nobody want to be wrong, dog. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody want to be wrong, dog. It's a lot of people when you arguing with them. And just off the strength that they don't want to lose the argument, bro, they'll completely shut out to what you're saying. You could be making all the sense in the world, dog, but it's just, especially when it's a heated argument, you don't want to lose this argument. And I feel like that's the. Th I feel like it was a big pride thing, and so early in the Bible, I, I see like it's like a reoccurring role of how detrimental 
pride could be or when you really lean on to your own understandings or when you try to take God out of the equation and you just rely on yourself because here it is you all offering stuff unto God you trying to make God happy right but you mm -hmm. going against what God's saying you doing your own thing and, and it could have been innocent it could have been innocent but when God don't accept your thing and you talk to your little brother and your little brother say bro honest to God if you to do the right thing God would accept it but because God didn't accept it you do the wrong thing it's hard pills to swallow like that when you let God down <laughs> and your little brother looking at you like because you know what it is bro like you go into class and flicking the teacher asks who do the homework oh boy it's only one person who actually do the homework oh boy they turn in the homework <laughs> and then the teacher penalized the whole class oh all y'all gotta do a pop quiz because y'all didn't do the homework you know you modded you modded the guy this one person you modded him and he could if he turn around and say earl if you to do the homework, we wouldn't have been in this mess. Would and that you, be what you want to hear? And you even more mad because you know he right. You know he right, bro. So, so like you super mad. <laughs> you super like, mad. The thing is, is like most people can't rationalize being mad at themselves because they're like, shoot, I can't take it out on myself. Right. So they lash out at others trying to mask their own, I guess, insecurities. They Our own wrongdoing. They own, they, they own wrongdoing. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. So, so just to backtrack for the people listening, right? And I want to put this in like super layman's terms. We're reading from Genesis 4. And um, Cain and Abel were the first were the first children of Adam and Eve. Cain was the older brother. Abel was the Abel was the younger brother. And it came a time, as Earl mentioned, Cain, um, Cain worked in the fields and stuff like that. Like he was a farmer. And he's probably pretty good at that as well. When it was time to have a sacrifice, Abel sacrificed the lamb as what as was instructed to do cain brought all of the best fruits vegetables etc a fire came down and accepted abel's sacrifice and not cain's now for context i think we just read this in ellen white patriarchs and prophets chapter i want to say chapter four um when they did those sacrifices they would sacrifice a lamb and then they would also sacrifice food. You understand? Um, but Cain say, I ain't coming with the lamb. I just could do my thing. I could do my food. You feel me? And so right now, the, the point where we're talking about right now is Cain's, Cain's internal conflict and his reaction to Abel after, after God did not accept his sacrifice. You know? And even to break it down even more simply, we could also say that Abel chose to be obedient to God and Cain also chose to be rebellious. He chose his unbelief. I mean, and then essentially he lied and he arrested the main problem of this story. One brother chose to do right and while the other brother chose to do wrong. And then so when you, when you go to chapter, I mean, verse... Verse 8, <laughs> Cain told his little brother, let's go out into the field. Let's go for a little walk. It's me paraphrasing. And so while, while they're in the field, and to me, this Cain, this, this Cain territory, like he knows these fields better than anybody. <laughs> like... <laughs> And it will never even been brother, to these fields. You being a younger brother, but you even thinking like, oh, should I get to hang out with my big sibling? Yeah. You know, like, oh, shoot, he about to like, you know, show me something I don't know. You know, about to have fun. Can you, can you attack him and kill him? Hmm. That's cool. So that, that just go to show how angry it made Cain. But you know what it is, bro? Like, like to be jealous of someone, dog. Like to really just be jealous and like just angry, bro. This person... You know, like you want to be the point guard on the basketball team, but here it is, you, you in grade 12, but someone who in grade, like he in grade 10. Grade 10. You see what I'm saying? Freshman. Outshining you and it's the coach favorite, and this means so much to you. Like that type of anger, but even more because you, you're not going to try to to try to kill that person. You know what I mean? I know what you're going through, really and truly, but you shouldn't want to kill somebody for for just being, for I mean, just being better. Take it like deeper, bro, like, 
These are the first siblings. These are the first siblings recorded in the Bible. And hmm. Cain still hated him. Cain still hated him. I wouldn't, was so angry, so jealous that he still said, you know what? In this rage of hatred, I am going to kill my only brother. My only brother, my only sibling. Hmm. I am going to kill him, bro. Like, you're the first murderer in the Bible. Bro. Oh. This is the first murder in the Bible. Is this like the second sin that we have like documented? Like the first one was the eating the fruit. Maybe. And it is like number two. So just to backtrack on what I said earlier, Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter five, um, page 21, I mean, page 71, paragraph two. <clears throat> it was saying without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. And they were to show their faith in the blood of Christ as the promised atonement by offering the firstlings of the flocks in sacrifice. Besides this, the first fruits of the earth were to be presented before the Lord as a thank offering. You understand? Mm -hmm. So to give it some more context, he didn't even come to God with a full offering. <laughs> you understand? So here it is. You, you doing a sacrifice to, um, what's it called? To, for forgiveness of your sins, right? You come into God for forgiveness. But you ain't asking God for forgiveness. You know what I mean? You're just giving him a tank offering. And you know, and it almost defeats the purpose of the sacrifice. Yeah. Because we sinners. The reason why we, we trying to get forgiveness is, is sort of, is because, because the wages of sin is debt. You know what I mean? And we don't want eternal damnation. So we, sac we, we do these sacrifices for the Lord to for forgive us. But it's like Cain, Cain just jumped the gun and he like, I feel like Cain was coming from a place where, where, you know what it is when you, when you have a boss and your boss asks you to do one thing, but you do something else because you thinking this might be a smarter solution that your boss ain't even thinking about. Mm -hmm. And once, and once you do this and you execute, you can look good. Your boss can look at you like, shoot. I didn't even think about this X, Y, Z. I personally think that's where, that's how Cain was coming. Yeah, I mean, he was come, like he was trying to come up with a substitute, but at the same time, it's like God told them what he wanted. And that's, and, that's, and, and that's where we go wrong, I feel like, as human beings. Because we try to lean on our own understanding. We try to say, okay, God asked me for X, but... I think he really wants Y and Z. Hmm. When God say, no, I want X. I have given you specific instructions. I want X. I want you to do this. But we say, you know what? Money. I, I could still do this because this still feel right. This still, this still could get past. But then we see other people doing the right thing and we getting mad at them. Because hmm. we like, in our mind, y'all should be doing what I doing because I, I write. But we see them getting blessed. We see them moving on. Not saying that God still ain't gonna bless us, but you know, we see them doing other stuff and moving on and really happy and joyful. And we like, hold on, that should be me. Right. That should be me. So now you mad at them. Now you I'm mad not you mad. Like, why you mad at why you mad at them? <laughs> like And the crazy thing is like King get mad at Abel and he get mad at God. For sure. Like you get mad at the person who <laughs> And I can't even, like, I can't really get, like, I can't even really get on King because sometimes I find myself doing the same thing. See, but you wasn't getting spicy with God, though. I wasn't getting spicy with God. But I mean, like, in the human nature, it's like, someone tell you they want something, right? And you decide to put your own flair on it, and the person end up not liking what you do. Boy. And so now you feel disrespected. Yeah, that, that, it's like, it's like, I mean, you're embarrassing like, a way too, Dred. Yeah, I mean, it's like, think about, like, you're an artist, right? Uh. So now... Someone asks you for a verse or something, right? And they may even, they may even, you know, they, they, they will ask you for a verse, right? You send them your verse back. Send them your verse. And they say, nah, but they're seeing it. They're seeing it. That, see, I bug. It. I bug already. That could hurt you. Cause you're like, of course. I, I just take my time. I just give you what I thought you wanted. Model. And now they want it. Or even like, even, even bring it more close to the home, in a sense, to put it like this. 
they say they, they say they, they want a song about love, right? And you start talking about something else that ain't love. Mm -hmm. Your verse still solid to you. Your yeah. albums can still fit in this circumstance. But they say, but I tell you I want a song specifically about love, bro. About love. And you, and you like, bro, was what? what but this what, a fire what, verse, and this, this fit. Verse. This fit the song this better. This song, this complements your verse. Yeah. And they're like, no, I want that. I already tell you what I want. And now you mark. You feel like you waste your time. I, you waste your effort, and they disrespecting your talent. Yeah. And so taking it from Keen's perspective, he like, yo. I give you what I thought you wanted. I give you what I thought was being acceptable. God say, but you ain't give you. You like, that's not, that's your flaw right there. You give me what you thought. What you what you what, what you, you thought. You thought. Yeah. I already told you what I wanted or what I required from you. It wasn't, it wasn't no need to think. It wasn't a negotiation. Yeah. It wasn't too much negotiation. It's actually after you already see me accept your brother's offering. And God say, you know what is right. You know what is right. Hmm. And so after all of this, after all of this, Cain takes Abel into the field and does the unthinkable. Kills his brother. Mm. Kills his brother. It was like, you know that meme when they say nobody and then they say Cain? <laughs> like, like nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody can mm. doing this. Because literally, the order of operations was going the same as it always should be until Cain started deviating. Mm -hmm. So Cain didn't do the right sacrifice. The Lord had a conversation with him. The Lord didn't chastise him. The Lord said, bro, you do A, you get B. You understand? Exactly. You do Y, you get Z. Exactly. You feel me? So then he reason with Abel. Nah, the Bible don't say this, but two to one, Abel tell him what he what he didn't want hell. Abel probably tell him the same thing God was saying. Abel probably check him <laughs> as you should for your brother. Exactly. Again, was like, oh yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, um, you know what? Come meet me in the field a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, bro, for sure, for sure. What can Abel do? What can what can do? Done him. <laughs> Done him, bro. Normal. That's still insane to me, bro. To kill your own brother. That's wild. And it's like we was building up Cain to see how angry he was, but we didn't realize that he had to talk to God himself. Why are you mad at Abel? Why are you mad at Abel for doing the right thing? Why? Why you don't just stay mad at God for not accepting your wife? Exactly. You feel me? That's and it just go to show. How when people in the wrong, bro, they hate people who doing right, bro. Like when you deep doing wrong and you see somebody doing right, you hate that, bro. That's why, pe that's why people have haters, bro. Like sometimes you have friends who just envious of you, bro, and you don't even know why. All you're doing is showing them love. But because you doing right, they try to look at you as a reflection. And when, when they look at you, they see themselves and they see how far away they are from you. And it make them feel guilty in some type of way. Mm -hmm. And so now they thinking, you making them feel guilty, bro. Like you causing them this harm. So they have no other choice but to kind of lash out on you in some type of way. Yeah, most definitely true. I mean, shoot, he, he couldn't lash out at God. That was a, definitely going to be a battle he could not win. That's a fact, but I just feel like that's who he had. His, that's who his beef was with. Well, we know that because he was mad that God didn't accept a sacrifice. Yeah, so I, I, I just, I, 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 rest in peace to Abel. You know what I mean? But I just don't understand why dog do that to his brother, bro. That's how you know this boy was sick, bro. It's like when you're watching a movie, somebody killed their best friend. On, I, I gone too far. you watching a movie <laughs> and somebody betray their best friend or something like that. And then they continue just to go off the deep end. And then you realize at the end of the movie, Oh, this person was just sick that whole time. Yeah. You see what I say? Definitely. Cain, Cain was the first Bible character to go sicko mode, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was, Cain was in sicko mode, bro. You feel me? And Cain talked with his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the next thing we hear from this was that God was looking for Cain. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? The famous line. My Lord. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Like, Cain gets spicy with it too. That's what I try to show you. Like when you say, when you when you say you're guilty of getting of being frustrated with God, 
I like, bro, you can't, you can't compare yourself to Ken, bro. Ken was giving God attitude, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like God say, God see the whole thing. Yeah. So like, Listen, I don't... God already knew what happened. Like, God was giving him an opportunity to own up to it. Just like how when God came to Adam and say, Adam, where are you? They was hiding. Mm -hmm. And God was essentially yeah, asked Adam, what happened? And Adam was like, the woman you give me. Like God essentially tried to give you itself a, a time to come out and tell the truth. So you basically saying Cain was a chip off the whole block? But apple never fall too far from the tree. <laughs> the apple? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting choice of fruit there, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah, they're saying we don't really know it was an apple. Yeah. And then God, like, so God pulls up and say, bro, where is your brother? Where is your brother? Essentially, one already saying, your brother was with you. He ain't with you no more. So where he gone? And this before Enoch. You know, Enoch walk, and then he was no more. No more, exactly. You understand what I said? So I saw you and your brother come out in the field. Try I watch all of this? And this and this were kind of this were kind of um confusing me a little bit. These guys have a connection to God that is in a common connection today in that God was physically talking to them and I feel like it was on a regular basis. Now the Lord talks to us, but it's more of an internal thing. But then I'm sure some people could, you know, hear the voice of the Lord in other ways. But throughout Genesis, you can see where the Lord is physically talking to people. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, and because you guys are, are not far removed from the Garden of Eden, I would assume that you would understand God a little more than we understand God. And you would know that this guy sees everything and knows everything. <laughs> and because of that, when he asks, where is your brother? That's not the question. It's a deeper question he's getting at. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Because you could, you could even give him the geographic location of your brother still. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but he basically asking, how did your brother get to this point? You feel me? But, exactly. But I feel like he ain't giving him attitude still. You can't still give him out of two. I know. And that's come God, God even like jumped to the point after he said, God was like, so bro, what you do? I could hear your brother's blood mm -hmm, crying, crying out to me from the ground. <laughs> like what you do? Like where, what can, what have you done? <laughs> and bro, just to me, that's same phraseology. I can hear your brother's blood crying, crying. out to me from the ground. Maro. Like he ain't even, God ain't even slap up no more. Say, no, bro, I don't see what you want. Let me let you know that I already know what you do. Yeah, bro. Cause you look like you on play. <laughs> God. Like, 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 like it's like there's a play in time right now, bro. <laughs> understand, bro? See, bro, Earl, Earl. I just want you to help me understand, bro. Right? We know of murderers. We live in a sinful world. Sin has advanced way more than the time of Adam and Eve. We've known of people who pass away. We've heard of very heinous crimes. Heinous. We've also heard of people who have committed these crimes and instantly regret it. Mm -hmm. We see movies. We see like we see news stuff where like when they're in the interrogation room, these people breaking down and and just saying spilling all the beans. You feel me? That's the first murder would ever happen, bro. Mm -hmm. How my dog ain't remorseful instantly. How my dog ain't saying, oh my, I can't believe I do. You know what I mean? Like, like when you, when, like when you do something and you was caught in the moment and not a moment over, you feel me? And now it's a solemn moment where you have to just look back on what you did. I'm wondering why is this guy not in the frame of mind of complete remorse as he is talking to God? Bro, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I don't ever remember Cain ever saying he was sorry. I don't... See, I don't, I don't recall, and we can go, we we can go to it now. We can get there now. I don't recall Ken saying he was sorry, but I recall Ken being scared. He was just scared that someone was gonna kill him. Exactly, he was scared of the repercussions. Yeah, but Danny really, bro, it's like a lot of killers still scared to die, bro. For sure. So that don't really like fear doesn't really equate remorse. It really, right. it, it really doesn't. 
Yeah, and it, and it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, correct. So to answer your question, I don't think I don't think he was remorseful. I mean, he probably was remorseful. I don't, I don't think it was, that was documented or or he might have been remorseful. Might have been like a cover, a coping mechanism to try hide it. But yeah, I don't even know, man. King and Jess was a it's an interesting one. But then, like God say, I could hear the blood crying out from the ground. Now you are under the curse and driven. Hold on. Let me squash that out. So God essentially saying, I can hear your brother's blood crying out from the ground. Now you under a curse from a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hands. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. Hmm. You will be restless. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Like that was God's punishment to Cain, which was kind of like, because I mean, it even hurt Cain more because like, that's what Cain does, bro. Like Cain is <laughs> a farmer, a gardener. He works the fields. He grows crops. So God's saying, bro, you know what? The same ground that you tainted with your brother's blood, that you tainted with your brother's blood, you ain't gonna never be able to grow nothing from this ground again. All right. Like, that's a serious punishment right there. Like, that's like literally saying, I am taking away your gift from you. Or and that's essentially what that's essentially what God did, in my opinion. Yeah, like that's, that's, what, that, that's what Cain loved doing, clearly, because that's what you love sacrificing to the Lord and saying, you know what? You ain't you this, you ain't able to do this no more. But then the next, I mean like a next like a next thought that I'm even gonna put on top of that. The devil knew about the plan of redemption, right? Mm-hmm. So what better way to snuff out the plan of redemption than to try to take out the people who the plan of redemption have to come from? Yeah. And take them out early. Exactly. Kill Abel, damned Cain. Because this would have actually been the, f- the first people born in sin. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like the devil really was really working to try to cause the human race to fall, fall. Like I already get you to fall, but now if I can stop even the sacrifice from coming through the generations which better way than just kind of cut it off at the top and cain said unto the lord my punishment is greater than i can bear behold thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face shall i be hid and i shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me <laughs> You gotta ask it. You gotta ask the question, bro. Bro. See, cause re- I gotta ask the question now. <laughs> but the thing is, I always ask this question. It's a famous question I know of asking. Yeah. But the thing is, I still have no answer for this question. Jeez. Who was Cain afraid of? That's the biggest question. Who was Cain afraid of? Because if we knew it was Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. Who was Cain afraid of? Because we know Cain had a wife. But if I have to. Well, I mean, even later on, bro, like when you get to, when you, when, when you get to verse 17, Cain lay with his wife. So we knew there was some people out there for Cain to be scared and some people out there for Cain to find a lady to sleep with. Boy. But here ends my speculation. See, because here it is, right? You could say that. You could argue that because they was living so long. Let's say Cain lived to be like 600 years old. Yeah, the Bible don't follow its genealogy. Well, right. it kind of does, but they don't get them. They, they don't put ages to them like how they did with, with Seth. Yeah, <laughs> with the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say Cain lived to be six hundred, right? But let's say he move away. It, and um, somebody from the genealogy of Adam could have been like two, three hundred years old, and Cain just don't know them, but they know of Cain, and they want to avenge. Abel. I don't know why they would because they wouldn't have known Abel. You understand? Like, I think Cain was saying, bro, this life's going to be long and you never know who you could buck up to in the future. But if they buck up to me, they go on kill me. Now, I, no, I ain't saying that's what I think. I'm saying that is a possibility based on the evidence that we have. Exactly. You feel me? But other than that, I mean, I ain't ruling off the table that there were a great number. Oh, there was a uh, Good much number of people who just weren't documented I mean, during yeah, this time. Because, I mean, because like the Bible only follows like the male genealogy, 
which is kind of because like you don't because they matter very well have daughters and stuff like you, you just mm-hmm. you just don't know because when it was Keen and Abel after Keen and Abel then they had Seth and then we know after Seth you had everybody else but they don't ever say like oh there was a insert random biblical female name here because mm-hmm. I didn't want to start listing names and yeah, he won't go down. They're getting that by. And he'd be like, what? Why you chose that name? Yeah. But man, oh man. But the Lord, and what's, what's, still, what's still so interesting is the Lord still had like some form of compassion on Cain. And even though in all of Cain's fail, the Lord still said, you know what? No, no one's going to hurt you. If anyone kill you, they will suffer a vengeance seven times over. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, so no, so no one who found him would kill him. Hmm. And, which is still so interesting. So like, my like, you know, the difference between grace, mercy, and justice. Yes. Like justice is when you get what you deserve. Grace is what is when God gives you something that you don't deserve. Exactly. And then mercy is when you is when He spare you from something that, that you, you do deserve. deserve. Yeah. Exactly. So God had mercy on this man and essentially grace. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, because injustice? Oh, just as he was doing some time, or he was going to get killed. King's supposed, to, King's supposed to be an eye for an eye, two for a two. Yeah. <laughs> but God said, you know what? I'm going to let you live, which is already saying, <laughs> you know, that's already your grace and mercy right there. God said, you know what? I am going to put a mark on you so no one will hurt you. And if they so even think they can hurt you, whatever they do, they will get inflicted seven times more. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just... And that just go to show how much God love, you know. Because he's still protecting. That's like, that's like a parent's love, bro. Like, no matter what you do, but you can't touch my boy. No matter who, no matter who my, what my boys be out there doing, I still want to protect him. Nah, I can still put him in his place. Exactly. You see what I saying? I can still discipline him. Cause that's love. Discipline is love. You understand what I saying? But at the same time, I still gonna protect him. You know, and what I think is even deeper than that is just the example that you can't outsend God's love. So here it is. When you commit the first murder to a human. Especially in the cars. In the cars, that is a gravity. Unlike what we see today. You commit a murder, that is very bad. That is very heinous. But to be the, to commit the first murder, and then not be your brother, me being a human, I put, a, I put more gravity on that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But guess what God's saying, bro? I forgive all sins, bro. Exactly. Don't get, don't try to get fancy with me saying all oh, this. No, 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 bro. I forgive all of them sins, bro, because I love you. You know what I mean? And even though I, I kind of villainized Ken, I paint him as a villain even early in our discussion. It still showed that at the end of the day, when you repent, God still read, but like God hard up to forgive you and to love you and to still take care of you. The story of Cain is an unfortunate one. It's a story of jealousy, animosity, and betrayal. Because instead of being his brother's keeper, Cain ended up being his brother's murderer. But even that wasn't enough to separate him from God's mercy and protection. Cain later went on to the land of Nod, where he and his wife started their lineage. A lineage that corrupted the world from then straight into the flood. But we'll talk about that on the next episode of A Breath of Fresh Air.